In this video, I want to show you how to use your ESP8266 module to send data to a website. So what I have done is I have I bought a server with the URL ESP8266.alabody.com, and in the same server, I created a text file called my file.txt. Notice that the file is empty right now. I have also created a script called receiver.php and when I pass it the parameters apples 45 oranges equals 23 then these two values get read into a text file so every time I visit this website and I change this number to anything I want then those values get written to my file.txt let me change the values one more time so these are the new values so this is what I'm gonna show you to do but uh, instead of sending the data from my browser to the server we're going to use, of course, the ESP8266 module. Before I show you how to use the module, let me go ahead and show you the receiver script that takes care of creating the file and writing the data. So this is the receiver script. It's written in a language called PHP. I have a variable that I call var1 that is in charge of getting the value from the apples parameter another variable called var2 gets the value from the oranges parameter another variable that I made is called file content so this is what I want to put in the file the file status would be either true or false when this function gets executed this function creates a file, puts the con this content in this file and it appends the content. If you don't want to append the content, simply remove this parameter and the, the text file will get overridden every time with the new data. I then check the uh, status of the file. If it's a success, then I write success data written to file. So this data that is this string that I have with the with an echo is actually sent back to the browser. In the case of the ESP8266, this string will be shown in the terminal. The the reason why so let me talk to you also about HTTP requests. The reason why this says get is because that is the type of request that I'm using. I'm using a get request. I will also show you how to use a post request in this same video. But let's stick with the uh, get request for now. So what do we need to send data from the ESP module? Of course, we first need to reset the module, connect to a router connect to my server then specify the length of the get request this is going to be the length of my post request that I will show you later so to send a get request I have to send the string get space slash receiver.php a question mark followed by the parameters with the equal sign and the value for the parameters the parameters are separated with an ampersand symbol so my oranges will equal to 34 and let me change those numbers since I believe I've used those already so I will make the apples 56 the oranges 23 space HTTP slash 1 slash R slash N to create a new line with a carriage return then I specify the host which is my server so this could be an IP address if you don't have a server like I do and then the uh, end of command symbols 
So let me go ahead and open the terminal where I have connected my Wi-Fi module. So let's go ahead and reset the module. Connect to the router. Connect to my server. Send the length of the get request string. And then send the get request. So I get the success message that I get in my browser, which is what I had my script output whenever there was a success in the file getting written. So now if I refresh my file.txt page, then I get my 56 apples and 23 oranges. Sending a post request is also very similar in your receiver script you have to change get to post now your post request command is actually pretty different from your get request command this is the format of a post request so you put this line at the top this will be your script the content type, the content length, which is the length of the parameters and the values string. So if you count this character, if you count uh, the characters here, there should be 25. And then we put a blank line followed by the parameters and the values. So our, in our case, this will be apples and oranges. And actually they don't have to be in any specific order so they don't have to match the order of your receiver script they just have to be specified somewhere otherwise you will get an error if you don't specify either of the two parameters or you might get an error actually it depends on the version of php you're running in the server so the get request string has to be this information but all in one line and of course, we have to include all the characters, even the new line character, which would be slash r slash n. So we're going to need to send this line slash r slash n. Send this line slash r slash n. This line slash r slash n. And then to make another blank line, once again, slash r slash n. Followed by the parameter and the value. So this is actually my post request string for my website. And I will be sending the value of 12 for apples and 45 for oranges. If you count the number of characters in this string, then you will see that we have 154. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So we connect to the website. Specify the length of the string request. And send the uh, string request. I'm going to refresh the file. And there you go. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh yeah, and I forgot one more thing. Uh, if you wanna, there's actually some differences in uh, in the cases for when you might want to use get and post. I'll be posting a link to this website, and there's actually a pretty good table that explains the differences. So that way you can know when to use which.
one thing that's pretty important is that uh, the post request can actually send binary data. The get request only allows for ASCII characters. When I say binary data, I mean like you might you probably want to send images or something like that, which uh, I might create a tutorial for that later.